Now we're replacing the O-rings here on the Ford spring lock fitting, which is very important as the refrigerant will leak past the O-rings. We'll use the O-rings supplied in the O-ring and seal kit. Now we're ready to install the new orifice tube. What you want to do is, with your refrigerant oil, get the O-rings on the orifice tube wet. This helps installation. And the orifice tube is directional. There will be an arrow located on it, and that is the flow of the refrigerant. In this case, going down. Now, the way you know if the Ford spring lock fitting is engaged all the way, push down until you hear it click. Physically try to pull it back out. If you can't, then you know it's locked in place and put the safety retaining clip back on. Now we're ready to install the accumulator. Get all the fittings snug and then start the bolts for the mounting brackets. Next we're going to tighten up the hose fittings to the accumulator. Once again make sure you're using a backup wrench. Next we're going to install the switch onto the accumulator. This switch you don't need to use a wrench, just hand tight. Put the electrical connector back on. Make sure you lubricate the orifice tube when you're installing it and make sure that it's installed properly following the arrow of the direction of the refrigerant. Now we're going to evacuate the system. With both of the couplers installed and both of your valves open all the way, go ahead and hook up to your vacuum pump and turn it on. You'll notice on the low side gauge, it starts to draw a vacuum. You need to leave the vacuum pump on for approximately 30 minutes to an hour. After you pull the deep vacuum on the system, you're ready to recharge the system. Using a charging scale, put the recommended refrigerant amount back in the vehicle. So we're going to go ahead and recharge the system. Start by turning off the vacuum pump. Now with the refrigeration scale, I'm going to measure the amount of refrigerant that we're putting back in the system, which this vehicle calls for two pounds, five ounces. Now with the system at a partial charge, we're gonna go ahead and close the high side on the gauge set, and we're gonna start the vehicle. We started the vehicle, and ran it with the compressor off and then inspected the serpentine belt to make sure that it was on the pulleys correctly. After all the work is completed, go ahead and check your evaporator temperature by using a probe thermometer in one of the vents. Okay, the job's now complete. Everything's working properly and the customer's ready to go.